Well, hello there, my beautiful, lovely internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. My nubbin on the table is not like a gimmick. This is genuinely how I sit whenever I have something in front of me because it relieves a lot of pressure from my hips for whatever reason. So this is what we're working with today. First and foremost, the main topic of today's video is a pretty heavy one. Check the description down below for a content warning. This is a topic I'm very passionate about and I believe needs to be spoken about, but it's not gonna be for everyone and has the possibility of making your day a little more gloomy. But secondly, I have a very large announcement a project that I have been working on for months in the background with one of my good friends that I am so excited to finally introduce to you, to finally show you guys, to get you involved. No, it's not merch or anything you're buying or anything like that. All the details are at the end if you're interested. What we're talking about today is a bit of a blast to the past. Not many of you know this, but when I first started on YouTube, it was not Footless Joe. It was a channel called Trauma Talk where I talked about figuring out how to live again, dealing with PTSD after a number of assaults that occurred to me, how that sort of fractured who I was and the process of like coming alive again and figuring out how to live. But the way that our society deals with subjects like sexual assault, abuse, still has a lot of really big problems in it. And I don't think that there is a better way to possibly illustrate that than the way that a very large and well-known YouTube creator responded to the allegations of a lot of people saying that Russell Brand had assaulted or abused them. So you may be familiar with this creator's face if you also spend maybe too much time on the internet, just pearly things. I have been aware of Hannah for quite some time. You may know her for hits such as women are too stupid to vote. Maybe she just said women shouldn't vote. I'll fact check myself on that one. She's like the anti-feminist of social media and has just found a way to make money by pandering to a very specific community of men online. Doesn't matter if I think that's sincere or not. Her words still matter because she has millions of viewers tuning in to listen to her. Here are some highlights from her interview on Piers Morgan, super big name. This is all very mainstream. And also from her podcast about the allegations against Russell Brand. Russell Brand has had a ton ton of accusers come out against him. And it's always the same thing. It's like 10 years later, these chicks that had consensual relationships convinced themselves that they were. A I mean, I'll give you guys like six months to report it. If you don't report it within six months, I, I, where is the confusion? How do you not know if you were assaulted? What that means is feminists got in their ear and convinced them that it was assault. Well, and you're telling me that a guy that has women throwing themselves at him 24 7 had to rip somebody that doesn't make sense to me well i don't think i don't think you could... the thing that she said that that made my blood pressure spike and decide to do this video was the whole i'll give you six months i mean i'll give you guys like six months okay i'll give you six months well thank you so much for your generous time offer pearl that's not how this stuff works unfortunately the first thing that becomes abundantly clear is that pearl has a great deal of ignorance on the topic of victims of sexual assault and abuse it is incredibly common for it to even take years before a victim of this type of crime comes forward even to like trusted people in their lives about what has occurred, let alone authorities. The reporting rate for sexual crimes is very low and it is very common for it to come years and years later. Now in the vast majority of cases, this is not because someone has been convinced or they talk themselves into, no, something really did happen. I should totally ruin my life by bringing this public accusation forward. I should totally re-traumatize myself and absolutely destroy my life by bringing this thing forward and being publicly crucified for it. It's because oftentimes it takes our brains that long to understand what has actually occurred. So I'm gonna be sharing some of my own personal experience in this. When I was raped, I did report it two weeks later. My experience with our legal system was very traumatic. No justice was served. Coming forward to the police was a very bad experience for me. It took me two weeks of being in shock and being like, there, but there's no way this person that I love, that I care about, that I've spent almost a year of my life with, there's no way that they would actually do that. Like that couldn't that couldn't happen to me. There, this is a misunderstanding. I'm over dramatic. I'm overreacting. Hi, it's Editing Joe here. Quick note, one of the biggest factors in my head for not coming forward sooner was also that I didn't want to ruin his life. Yes, you know, he did this thing against me, but I don't want to ruin his life over it. There was a lot of motivation to protect this person that I loved and cared about, even though they did this atrocious thing. And that's also a really common response. It took me two weeks to come forward, go to the 
police, start that process. And then it was a process of years of therapy to work through that, to understand that there was still so much, there's no way that could have really happened, right? Because it is so mind blowing that that kind of a violation can occur. And additionally, realizing that someone can truly take control of you, that that kind of violation can occur. It can oftentimes be easier for our brains to believe, hey, that was my fault. I misunderstood. I did something wrong. Yeah, this horrific thing happened and everything in my body says that wasn't good, but it's not that big of a deal. And I forget if I've ever actually talked about this publicly or not, so here we go. That was not the first time that had occurred to me. There was another time and that was never reported to police because it took me seven years talking about this kind of stuff, of speaking about it publicly, of being invited to give speeches places about surviving sex. So it took me seven years of being in therapy to work through something else to realize that, yeah, I did say no and no and no and no. And then eventually I just shut up. But I'm sure that was like, that was giving consent because I didn't like keep saying no, I just shut up. Like I had all of the pieces in front of me knowing I said no verbally many times and then just going numb and dead and cold and silent. That's not consent. And I know that I would never think that is consent for somebody else, but I could not believe that that is what had really occurred, that that was the level of violation, that that was also if you do any research at all, you will find the majority of the time it takes people a long time to come forward because of how our brains respond to trauma. I'm gonna put some resources in the description down below so you can continue to do your own research on this. And hey, Pearl, if you're seeing this video, I would love it if you check out those resources so you can be more informed and in giving your opinions to your millions of followers and perhaps not spreading super harmful misinformation. The second thing, my blood pressure was already spiked at this point, but, but the second thing that she said Said that kind of sent me over the edge was, you know, these men are rich and powerful. They don't need to anybody. Women are throwing themselves at them all the time. You know, it's such a trope. It's such a trope now for women to come forward years after the fact and accuse these poor, poor, innocent people of these things. Does that happen? Yes, absolutely, that has occurred. Does that happen commonly? No, absolutely, it does not. Please go look at the research and statistics. The idea that this kind of crime, that sexual violation is about sex, it's understandable that someone would come to that conclusion, right? Like that's the point of the crime, except that it's not. Sexual assault is not primarily about sexual gratification. It is about power and control. These men don't need to take sex from anyone. You know, they could, they could have anyone that they want. It's a very ignorant statement to make because it is common for people in positions of power and authority, unfortunately, to weaponize that power and control. We just start to see this trope too many times where men that are rich and famous get women that falsely accuse them of stuff that happened years ago. And it, all, and it just seems like a bitter ex. And it's not a trope that women, and let's be really clear on this, people in general, because this is not a gendered issue. Yes, statistically more women experience sexual crimes than men do, but if you look into it, the numbers are not that different and it is even harder for men to come forward about this kind of stuff, which breaks my heart because knowing what it was like as a woman, it was horrific. If anything, it's like an exhausting old story that it's people in power who continue to take advantage of people. What that means is feminists got in their ear and convinced them that it was assault. They've expanded the definition of all of these words to make them subjective. For example, abuse is now emotional abuse. Now there's financial abuse. So they expand the definition so much that we don't even know what it is anymore. Like I said, Pearl's kind of like the anti-feminist. So it does not surprise me that she's bringing up feminism as the reason why people are convincing themselves that they were uh, I think that is a very ignorant way of looking at things, but throughout the rest of the video she talks about, you know, feminists have made up things like emotional abuse and made up things like financial abuse. You do know those are real things, right? Those are things that occur. We have words for them now. She talks about, you know, abuse used to be when a man would hit a woman and now it's all these other, th yes, it is all of these other things because there's not just one form of abuse. There's not one way that always occurs. It is nuanced. And I don't, I don't think that that is that radical of a concept to understand. When I hear people who don't seem to know what they're talking about, talking about victims of sexual assault, they seem to think that that person who has been victimized should behave as if they are someone who has not just underwent trauma. There are changes in your brain that occur. There are neurological, physiological things 
that happen when you experience severe trauma like this. And so often the expectation that is placed on victims is to behave in a very specific, rational, logical, normal way. When you have gone through something like this, it changes you. There are parts of you that just shut down. When you talk about physical violation, physical violence of this magnitude, it is such an outdated and willfully ignorant position to take. Well, that if it really happened, you would just come forward to the police and you would just say it immediately and you would seek help because we know from years of understanding how this works, that that is not how this works. You're not gonna think and behave in the same way as someone who hasn't experienced those things. I feel like that is a pretty easy thing to understand and yet we continue to have these conversations and when I listen to Pearl, honey, you're the reason why it was so damn difficult to come forward. And when, when you're raped, there are absolutely, I hope, people who will believe you. There were people who believed me. Those people were life-changing for me. There are also a lot of people who will not believe you, who will blame you for it, who will say horrific things about you that just re-traumatize what you've already experienced. Even very well-meaning people, well-meaning people in my life said some pretty, horrific shit to me about what occurred, let alone the people who didn't know me, let alone talking about this publicly years later on the internet with my first channel trauma talk. Like I remember releasing a video here about getting a restraining order and what that process was like. This video came out like years ago and I knew what the comment section was gonna be and I was not disappointed. Well, I was like deeply disappointed, but I wasn't naming names. I wasn't calling anyone out. I was talking about what my experience of getting a restraining order against someone who had me was like. And I got comment after comment calling me a whore, calling me a liar, saying this never happened to you as if they know anything about my life. Was it I wasn't accusing anyone in particular. It wasn't a public figure. I was just sharing my experiences. And I just had a litany of comments about what a lying sack of shit and a slut and an like that is also what you very unfortunately have to expect if you're coming forward with this with these kinds of allegations. And honestly, this is the downside of living a super promiscuous life for men, is that they become rich and successful later and all their ex-girlfriends magically believe that now they were abused. Seemingly often, when a story breaks about a celebrity or a politician being accused of something like this, generally not one accusation, right? Like oftentimes it'll be one and then three and then seven, and then 12. The stories kind of multiply and people look at that and squint their eyes like, oh, that's clearly people are lying for attention, for money, because of media conspiracies, whatever. One of the reasons why when someone brings an accusation forward, other people tend to also begin telling their stories is because you realize, oh my God, I'm not alone. I wasn't crazy. That thing really did happen to me and maybe I've tried to bury it down. Maybe I've tried to forget about it, but I'm seeing that this person who hurt me also hurt another person. There is strength in community, in numbers, in coming forward together. For me, the most dangerous thing about being a victim of this kind of a crime was the intense isolation that I felt. So isolated from anything and everyone, I thought that the stuff that I was feeling, there's no way anyone else could feel that. But when I began talking about it and connecting with people and realizing, oh, it's, it's not just me. That is the thing that saved my life. So when you see people coming forward with their stories after someone else has spoken up, that makes perfect sense to me psychologically. And that, dear friends, leads me into the big announcement, something I'm very excited and anxious to share with you. And I invite you to join us live. All the information is on screen, also in the description, but I'm starting a podcast with my best friend. Now I know, I know, I know. Every YouTuber has a podcast, right? This was inevitable. But one of my very best friends, Aaron from Life of Palos, you guys might be familiar with him. He's also a YouTuber here, but he and I have been besties in real life for like five years now. We are starting a live streaming podcast called Turbo Dude. It's like being an alpha male, but better. Don't be an alpha male, be a turbo dude with us, okay? We're gonna be talking about subjects not about amputation, gender relationships, dating, marriage, topics like this, like the stuff I just talked about today with Pearl. There is a very large community of people online. It's called like red pill community content. Think people like just pearly things, Andrew Tate, Fresh and Fit, the whatever podcast that are, that are talking about what I believe are things that need to be discussed because our society is not doing a great job teaching people how to connect, how to date, how to have conversations about healthy relationships. There's this big push for traditional values, traditional marriage, 
we need to go backwards because going forwards isn't working for us. What it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man, everything in between, and this is stuff that has fascinated me for years. And so we are starting a weekly live stream podcast right here on my YouTube channel, where we're gonna be bringing in a panel of guests to talk with us every week. Aaron and I had conversations about this kind of stuff for years, and we weren't seeing a lot of good public discourse that wasn't from the red pill community about these topics, like a lack of perhaps a more moderate and nuanced and calm uh, perspective. I also think we're both pretty level-headed. Hope that we'll be able to talk to people Hope so. who like very much disagree with us and to have a civilized conversation about that. Civil. Yeah. A little bit of class. Yeah, I was, I was literally about to say that. I was like, oh. we're going to bring the, hopefully some class to this space because yeah. I do feel like it is lacking a little bit. And so that is what we are striving to bring. Like I said, details up above and down below. And I can't wait to see you there. So join us tonight live. Yes. This is a live streamed podcast. It took so long to get the equipment right for this guy. Neither one of us have any background in also, like setting up a set. It's kind of a new deal. I never go live with stuff. So this yeah. is kind of oh, a big yeah. departure from normal. Wait, that's true. You, I never go live. You don't. I don't. Oh, but that's right. I'm ready. So join us tonight, six Yay. o'clock Pacific, which is nine o'clock Eastern. We'll see you here. <laughs> I struggle with the time zones. That was great. <laughs> and I'm also very excited to share with you more of who I am as a full person because for like five years now, I've created content around amputation, disability, mental health, grief, trauma, you know, little things like that, but it's mostly been about my life as an amputee. The reality is that is like, that's a portion of my life. That is not what I spent the majority of my time thinking about or what defines me as a human being. So I'm very, I'm so looking forward to hearing other people's opinions, to sharing mine, to be able to show you guys, for anyone who is interested more of who I am as a person and not just as an amputee, because I am actually a person. True story, didn't know if you knew that. Thank you for joining me for today's video and this announcement. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm gonna be watching people blow up prosthetic sockets. To all my patrons over on Patreon, thank you so much for your continued support. And to you, my dear viewer, thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else, but you chose to hang out and chat with me for a few minutes. And I truly appreciate that. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah, bye guys.